Ilya Soman is a professor at George Mason's Anson Scalia Law School. He recently wrote a piece for the Washington Post lamenting what he called ignorance about immigration. Once people learn the facts about immigration, he says, they will become substantially more in favor of it. He himself supports open borders, pretty much. Professor Soman joins us tonight. Professor, thanks for coming on. Thank you very much for having me. I don't begrudge different views on immigration. A lot of people support it to a greater extent than I do. My complaint with your piece was the word ignorance. You ascribed it to people who disagree with you, and your point was you just don't know enough if you disagree with me, and that didn't strike me as fair. That's not true of everyone, but it is true of many people that if you look at survey data both here and in Europe, a lot of opposition to immigration, not all, but a lot is due to ignorance about things like the numbers of immigrants, whether or not they go on welfare, and whether they increase the crime rate or lower it. So I guess, I mean, not to turn this around on you, but it, it seems to me, I think your views are not fully informed. I, I wouldn't use the word ignorance necessarily, but you say this. In February 14, you wrote, increased immigration is unlikely to increase the size of the welfare state, when in fact there's a great deal of evidence that that's silly. Immigrants to this country take welfare at a higher rate than American citizens, and states with massive numbers of immigrants have much higher welfare rates than others, California being the most obvious example. So that's not an informed statement. Uh, actually, I think it is, because when you look at studies by economists across the political spectrum, you find that states controlling for other variables that have more immigrants do not have larger welfare states. Yes, California is a large welfare state. On the other hand, Texas, which has large percentage of immigrants, uh, has a smaller welfare state than most other states. So the way that those studies are conducted, which I think is dishonest, the Cato did a famous study like this, where they compare immigrant welfare recipients only to poor Americans and say immigrants are less likely to receive welfare. But overall, they're more likely. California has 12% of the nation's population, but has like 33% of federal welfare recipients. I mean, that's because of immigration. What's the other cause? Even if you compare just per capita welfare spending overall in states with more immigrants compared to those with less, those that have more do not have more welfare spending. That's what Cato and also various economic studies as well uh, find. So even if you don't compare them just to Americans of the same income class or whatnot, if you just compare states with a lot of immigrants to those with less, and get that same well, you result. can compare the immigrant groups, too. I mean, look, part of the reason this is a silly debate is because it pretends all, all immigrants are the same. And some immigrants from certain countries have very low welfare rates, and others have overwhelming, over 75% welfare rates. And so we're sort of pretending that they're all fungible, they're all the same, but of course they're not. You also said immigrants' political views, when you get right down to it, are a lot closer to those of people born here. And yet the statistics show that they're overwhelmingly not 65% of Hispanic immigrants vote Democrat. That's not the same as people who live here. They change the political balance of a state. What I said is that when you look at immigrants' views on particular issues, things like size of government, social issues, and the like, the gap is much smaller with, than with natives than many people assume. And moreover, it gets smaller in the second or third generations. With Hispanic immigrants, these statistics often overestimate the difference because many second and third generations of, uh, generation descendants of those immigrants uh, don't even call themselves Hispanic in surveys. And those who don't call themselves Hispanic on average have political views closer to those of natives. Okay. This is something that I cover politics, and I think what you're engaging in with respect is bad social science, because the truth is it doesn't matter whether someone, as on the Supreme Court, whether someone may have a slightly more conservative or liberal position on an issue or two or five, what matters is who they vote for. So in California, for example, the state voted to ban gay marriage heavily with Hispanic support, but the state is, so I guess they would be conservative on that issue, but it's overwhelmingly Democrat to the point it's a one-party state because of Latin American immigration. So it actually doesn't have any effect. In other words, it's just a boon to the Democrats, period. And that's a change immigration rod. Actually, people's issue positions in the long run matter much more than what party they vote for because the parties, if they want to win, have to adjust their issue positions to where the electorate is. Uh, it is true in California uh, the Hispanics have helped the Democratic Party, but one area, of course, where immigrants do differ from natives is that immigrants are much less likely to be anti-immigrant. So the California Party, I'm sorry, the Republican Party in California became much more anti-immigrant than it was before immigrants suggested accordingly. That's just, in that's Texas, just, on the by, other by the way, hand, things happened the other to, way. To, totally silly. I mean, the idea that Pete Wilson, oh, look, this has been looked at pretty carefully, the idea that Pete Wilson, because he backed a measure banning illegal immigrants from getting welfare somehow turned every Hispanic immigrant in California to the Democratic Party is just, is just absolutely false. I mean, that state has no functioning Republican Party. 
and it's all because of immigration. If, if people who were, lived there in 1975 were the only people voting, it would be a Republican state. I mean, why not just admit that? Texas had just as big an increase in immigration in the 90s and 2000s as California, yet Texas Hispanics didn't show anything like the same behavior because the Texas Republican Party adopted a very different approach to immigrants than the California that's one. Just, that's just wrong. I mean, I, I don't know anybody who thinks that Texas will be a Republican state in 10 years. Who and, knows? And, and, the re and look, that may be wrong, but people who watch this carefully, including elected officials in the state, believe what the average person believes because it's obviously true which is massive demographic change has political consequences why not just concede that that's not ignorant to say that so who knows what will happen in 10 years but over the last 20 years patterns in texas have been very different than in california in considerable part because the republican party there has taken a different approach i don't claim that demographic changes never impact politics all i claim is that the impact is much less than many really people claim. Then, then why is it that the immigrant heavy areas of New York State are overwhelmingly Democratic, but the ones with native-born New Yorkers are not. I mean, that's, this is not just California. It's, it's everywhere. And maybe that will change in 100 years. But I guess here's just my point. I'm not saying immigrants are bad. I like immigrants. I'm merely saying that the idea that people who live here and were born here have no right to have a say in this or to be offended by the changes wrought by immigration is just silly or they're dumb if they don't like it which is what you're arguing i don't claim people have no right to feel what they do what i claim is much of what they feel not all but much is influenced by ignorance about a variety of topics related to immigration which is also true about a lot of public policy issues so it's not unique to immigration the problem of political ignorance it's more widespread than that, but it happens a lot. It's not because people are bad. It's because people, quite understandably, don't spend a lot of their time paying attention to details of policy issues, so it's easy for them not to know very much. But what if they notice that the communities they live in are completely different, and the economies they work in are completely different, and the assumptions of their neighbors are not the ones they grew up with? Is that ignorance that leads them not to like it? Well, Is actually, that bigotry? actually, I mean, survey data shows that people who live in areas with a lot of immigrants tend to be much more pro-immigration than those who live in areas with very few. That's one of the strongest results we have in this area of survey data. But you're, you're, you're totally ignoring my point, which is, don't people have enough data, as you put it, from living in this country to know that something has changed and this is part of it? Like, they're not necessarily ignorant. Why call them names? Why not acknowledge their views as legitimate? People can have views that are legitimate, but yet still heavily influenced by ignorance. The two are not mutually exclusive. If you're talking about people's personal experiences as a form of knowledge, those with the most personal experience with immigrants actually tend to be the most pro-immigration. So then why is there such a large percentage of the population who doesn't? learn the esoteric knowledge that you have that they somehow haven't internalized because they're busy with other things uh they're spending time on their jobs their families and if they're really? only because there's like endless pro pro immigration propaganda the whole diversity thing is about making sure that nobody complains about the changes taking place in the country like people are taught from birth practically in this country this is great they're constantly bombarded with messages on this and some of them don't buy it why there's endless propaganda on many political issues from all sides most people spend their time focusing on other things it's totally understandable that they do there's a lot of other things to watch on tv that are more interesting than political <laughs> propaganda okay okay it's not just political propaganda it's, it's there's no part of american life that's not screaming at you this is great you better like it or else you're an immoral person and yet a large percentage is resistant to that message, and I just find that well, really interesting. Well, it seems to me Fox News is part of American life, and they're not screaming that, and Donald Trump is part well, of American life, and so forth. Uh, so there's a lot of people screaming on all sides, but quite understandably, um, most of the public tunes that out and instead focuses on other things. And when they do focus on the propaganda, they may pick up very superficial uh -huh. things as opposed to more in-depth facts. This, this sounds like the explanation for everything. Why, why don't we like Obamacare? You just don't know enough. Why didn't you like Hillary? You just don't know enough. You're just not smart enough. Well, in each of these cases, we actually have data on <laughs> okay. Obamacare. Okay. Knowing more about it actually makes people more opposed to it. Okay. Well, it makes me opposed to it. Professor Summon, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for Appreciate having me. It.